Hi, this is Joseph Burton. And Linda Burton with Fighting to Stay Married. Today we're going to talk about uh, chapter one of Linda's book called Dancing in Harmony, uh, a guidebook to a harmonious relationship. Cuckoo! So, <laughs> yeah. So, um, or the last broadcast we talked about um, the introduction, right? And today I want to go over the, you know, not all of chapter one, but just hit some of the, some of the, some key points of um of chapter one and I'm gonna start off by reading um, the first few sentences and I want you to explain and elaborate on that a little bit more okay okay so chapter one dance type what you have in common could a couple dance hand in hand if one dances to hip-hop and the other to the tango their dance will be fact fractured uncoordinated unbalanced with no purpose or progress so what does that mean? You want to have something in common with the person. With that's what keeps you together. But your whole relationship is not about being with a person just like you. Mm -hmm. It's about knowing the person. It's about knowing what they believe in. It's about knowing their value. It's about knowing their purpose. Even knowing yours, like what we talked about in the introduction. Mm -hmm. Because if your values and your purpose and your vision and your goals in life is one thing and mine is something totally different that, mm -hmm. can, that can grow two different ways it might not work or it could work but we need to know that to make the adjustments to make it work together okay so it's taking the time to really know each other not just to get together with each other if you don't know each other it's really hard to do that dance mm. you know I'm going on the floor thinking I'm dancing to hip hop mm -hmm. and you're dancing to the tango. Mm -hmm. And we're not even dancing the same dance. Well, you could even you could even get on the same dance floor because the mute there's only both music the, is not playing the at the music same time. Music is playing country. You know? So I mean, you got to first listen to the music, right? Right. Right. So it's taking the time to really first, like we always said in chapter in. Um, introduction is know yourself uh -huh. and then you know what you're looking for you know the type of person you want to be with and it be in common with that now I'm not saying your background or your beliefs or your values have to be exactly the same because it's not we're different mm -hmm. we, we we came from different backgrounds we could have went to the same church mm -hmm. but my faith and your faith one might be stronger than the other mm. So it's not being exactly the same, but you need that balance. And the perfect example to make it work, the perfect example is, and we used this once before, is when we went on a date, we talked, before we dated, mm -hmm. we talked on the phone for almost a year, just on the phone. We, we were just friends. Do they associate. still do that today? <laughs> this day of time? We just talked on the phone. We didn't even date. We, we didn't even think about dating. And then one day you said you were going to join the service. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I'll never date anybody in the service. Mm. And I'll never forget you said, I had a chance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was shocked because I meant it, but I didn't know I meant it. Like, you know, it's because we talked so much on the phone of getting to know each other yeah of talking about nothing or just talking about our experience or talking about our life in general to know each other mm -hmm. and when we went on our first date to um actually it wasn't our first day our first time out to six flags mm -hmm. i remember you had already told me that you don't like roller coasters and you don't like rides yeah but I already told you, I love it. Mm -hmm. I love extreme sports. And I'm assuming that's why you took me to Six Flags. And I remember I went on the rides and you waited for me. And we made it work. Mm -hmm. we, we always, even to this day, we made it work. You stand in line with me. You cross over and you wait at the exit door. And it yeah. was great. But what happened if I didn't take the time to know that ahead of time? And mm. we get to Six Flags and I'm having, or I choose to have a horrible time because you're not getting on the rides with me. Right, right. So it's taking the time to really know the person. And that's what I'm saying. It doesn't have to be the exact same, but at least know 
what it is or what you're getting into. Know what the person believes, know their values, know um, who they are, know their dreams and goals. Take the time to really know that. Correct. Yeah, a lot of those rides, and you brought that up, see, a lot of those rides, a lot of rides I don't go, especially ones that go in a circle. I do not get on those. But surprisingly enough, enough, some don't bother me, but I don't know which will and which won't, Mm -hmm. you know? So, but that was really great that I could have an opportunity to have some peace of mind of going to, to have a good time at Six Flags without, you know, you going, you know, making it a horrible experience. Right. Because I wouldn't go on anything. I mean, I did go on some things, but, you know, the things that you wanted to go on, the things that make me feel really, <laughs> really, really horrible. Right. But we so. made it work. But it was fun. We still had a good time. And we did not have that in common, but we made it work. We made yeah. it fit. We made it go so perfectly. Why? It's because we took the time to know what is it. What are And you accept like? it. Yes. And accept it. Yes. And that's, not trying to change the person. That's the key. So chapter one, to me, is really taking the time to know the person, understanding what they believe, understanding their value, understanding their purpose, knowing their background, knowing their culture, knowing their beliefs, religion, as well as um, who they are. Mm -hmm. As much as you can know, right? Yes. Well, we've been married 27 years, Mm -hmm. 28 years this year, and we're still learning stuff about ourselves. Correct. Let alone when we learn something about ourselves, we have to share with each other for me to learn more about you and for you to learn about me. Yeah, we're living beings and that means things are gonna change and things are right. you know, so right. it's amazing though how how some people really don't know well not say really don't know but find out like it, it could be amazing that oh ten years later, oh really? Mm-hmm. You say stuff like that mm-hmm. because sometimes you know s- some of your past experiences are not brought up until something brings it up. Right, and luckily you know? we had that year experience, and we didn't plan it. We didn't get taught that way. It just kind of happened of just being friends, talking on the phone, getting to know each other. We shared experiences, we share passions, we share thoughts, interests. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people don't have time or take the time to do that, to really know each other mm-hmm. and then make it clear. It made me be able to trust you and have empathy mm-hmm. on some of the things like knowing you get sick on rides. You can't, that's something you can't do. It's not that you don't want to do it with me. Yeah. You can't. And I have to accept that. Mm-hmm. So now since the, um, since the chapter is subtitled, what you have in common? So it's subtitled that way to make sure that you get on the same page about some things. Yes. Right? You have to have something in common. Well, how would you even be with the person or meet the person if you didn't have something in common? Mm -hmm. Were you at the gym together? Yeah. You know what I mean? Then, okay, you have the gym in common. Were you at church together? Then you have church in common. Were you at the library library studying? Mm -hmm. Okay, then you have school in common. Like, you on it, you have something in common. So to start this dance, so if you were on the dance floor, you're saying, so to start this dance, first of all, there's only one song playing. There's not two or three songs. There's only one song playing, right? Mm-hmm. And then that's the start. And then you agree. And one dance. Well, yeah, and you automa- <laughs> Well, you automatically know how to dance because uh. of that one. Because of that one song. Uh. If the song, no, because if the song is a slow song, you're not going 100 miles per hour. You're not doing. You know what I mean? So that's the tempo and the beat and all that of the song actually puts you in common as well. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like okay, this is a sad song. You know, so I got to move a little bit faster. This right. is a slow song, so we both slow down. Right. So but it's knowing each other and agreeing with the, with the person. Um, knowing the person. Like, put on the same record, basically. Right. Like, Everybody knowing the person. On the like, same you know I have no beat or rhythm. Which one is it? Rhythm? I don't have either, but. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. Well, you know. So you know when you dance with me. <laughs> I have to leave. You have. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll and guide me like like nod your head to the beat so I can, get mm, 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 <laughs> so I can catch it or something. You know? See, all black people don't have rhythm. It's a shock to some people. No. <laughs> Stereotypes. 
so many of us do. <laughs> in, in not, this world, not everybody. Mix both both races should I have? You should have something. <laughs> have too strong. You rails. should have something, but you don't have. You know, well, you got a little something, but you know, it just. You know. So it's, it's very surprising. <laughs> so it's knowing each other's strengths and weaknesses as well and accepting those, but firstly knowing mine mm-hmm. and being able to feel safe and open to share that with you. This is my weaknesses. And it has to be okay with you. Yeah. You know, we need to know all that before we even go any farther. Maybe we should just be friends and that's it. You mm-hmm. know? It doesn't every relationship we have doesn't have to go to the next level. It's yeah. taking the time to know. And I know with me, I did one date and sometimes I didn't even do one date. I just did Did a half a date? A conversation. No, just a conversation in a public place where I met that person. Oh, you were very he, picky though, huh? I was very <laughs> where I met That person, person didn't have a chance. <laughs> I met the person and I already made that decision within a few minutes. No, that I'm no, and that's it. And other times I'm like, oh, that might work. Let me go on a date. Before that date is over, I clearly know I'm not or I am. Mm. You know, and the majority of times was I not because I knew my value and I knew my worth, like what we talked about in the beginning, in the introduction. Knowing that, I know what I want and I know what I. I deserve and what I what I didn't want to compromise on, mm. you know, and it's it's because what we talked about before. I learned my lessons from previous relationships, yeah, and I knew the danger signs, yeah, and I wasn't gonna go back to that. Mm. So I knew just because they went to church does not mean. Mm. As much as much as just because it, you know, it, it could be just because they went to church for whatever reason, it, but it wasn't the same reason why I went to church. Yeah, you know what they say, the devil sits in church too. <laughs> so it was taking the time to actually learning about myself, mm-hmm. learning my value, learning my worth. And in my case, we talked about this before in other, other episodes of writing a list and say, this is these are the things I'm not going to compromise with. These are the things that are nice to have and and keep that list mm-hmm. and be that person mm-hmm. for who's on my, that I'm looking for on my list will want to look for as well. Mm. Yeah, just don't make your list too unrealistic. Yes. Because yes. then you're going to get mad. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> ain't nobody going to meet anything on that list. And so. with, when time change and you change, your list change. As yeah. well, and then there's some things like when when I met you on my list, I do admit it was a car on there. Mm-hmm. And when we met at the time, you did not have a car. I was in the military. <laughs> well, when we met, you you didn't have a car then either. I don't. Think oh, I had did. a car. I know I had a car. Well, oh yeah, when I was when we met, I think I was in college. Yeah, you're in college. And I had a car, and I sold it. Yeah. So that was on my list, though. So yeah. see, I had to say, is this worth? Keep it. Are you worth keeping because you do not have a car? Now remember, we were teenagers. <laughs> no, we were past teenagers. No, we were we were teenagers. I was nineteen when I met you. So oh, oh I was no, tw- was I nineteen or twenty? Twenty. Twenty. Yeah. So, oh, I first, I met you. So oh, okay. we, before I went into the military. That's right. Yeah. So um, yeah. those are the different things. So know what drives you. What is your drive? So you can know, is this person helping me get closer to my drive? And and it's not that person's responsibility. When I say that, it's not anybody else's responsibility for you to meet your goals and dreams. But are they working with you or working against you? Hmm. Okay. So, so um, anything else you want to say on that? Um. No, what did you did you get anything else out of that? Well, um, it was it was it was meaty enough. It was a, a pretty good chapter about commitment, uh, a deeper commitment and what and whatnot. But I what I want to do is I want to end the proc uh, by, uh, pro, I'm sorry, I want to end the podcast by asking one of the questions, self reflection questions, to the audience, and I want you to reflect on it and think about it and see you know if you can if you can draw out more of a deeper conversation from uh, the question or from your first meet. Each chapter has four questions that make you think. Um, It's not meant to speed through it. It actually takes you time to think. 
So yeah. So the first question I want to leave with you okay. is in chapter one, or well, from chapter one, it mm-hmm. says, um, and after this we'll we'll end the broadcast or the podcast. So the question is, what value, belief, or priority first attracted you to your partner? So you asked that question. So you heard the question. So just think about it and have and see if you can have a meaty conversation with yourself or with your with with uh, your partner, your spouse. Yeah. Okay. So if now um, if, any last things that you want to uh, comment on? Yeah. In this last I thought I was going to answer the question. Oh no no, it's not for you. Because <laughs> I have a good answer. It's, 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 not, it's, it's not it's not for you to uh, answer. It's I for the. Share my answer it, no. <laughs> It's, it's for the it's for the uh, listeners to think about that question. So you know my answer. That's why. <laughs> no, no. So it's just so if you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments below, and we will look at those comments. And don't forget uh, if you have any other, uh, if you want to know more about the book, uh, know more about what we're up to and whatnot, please visit the website. It's jlburdenllc.com. Yeah, and, and also. When we said, I said earlier, the first three chapters is really the dating stage. These questions is good to go back to remember why I am attracted to this person. Mm-hmm. You know, like and when what you first brought you me together. that question, I'm like, ooh, I remember that. Yeah, you what know, first brought, brought you together. Yeah. yeah, so I think it's good if you're struggling with your marriage to go through these questions to re-bring back that that fire that came what what sparked that for you Mm -hmm. so okay we will talk to you next time have a good day thank you for listening bye-bye